hi everyone, it's Shannon from CKC, and today we are going to sew up the Calla's Valentine's romper. Um, first, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the pattern. Um, there are a couple things that you need to decide before you print out the pattern, and um, because there's options and you need to know which things to print out. So the first thing is this heart bodice. You can make it plain like this picture, or you can make it with, um, with piping like this picture, or you can make it with uh, a ruffle like this picture, or you can use a store-bought trim um, like this picture. And then the other thing that you have to decide is if you want the ruffle on um, the romper right here, the bottom portion, the bloomers, that's the word I was looking for, if you want the ruffle on the bloomers, or no ruffle on the bloomers. And then the final choice that you have to make is if you want the cross back like this or the halter tie like this. So once you make those decisions, um, you can move on to your fabric. We recommend a woven fabric for this. However, you can use a knit fabric, but you are going to need interfacing to use on the heart bodice. All right, so what you're going to do is tape your pattern pieces together and it will look like this and then you can cut out the options that you want um, i'm going to take you over to my cutting mat now where i have my pieces already cut out and we will cut out the wrapper okay so i'm here at my cutting table i have my fabrics that i'm using for um callas and i have my pattern pieces I'm pretty much going to use everything because I'm making the video, so I want to include all the options. So I have the side ruffles, the bias um, crotch trim, the back and front bloomers, the heart bodice, and then I am doing the uh, crisscross straps. If you're doing the halter straps, you want to use this dash line. So I'm going to cut it all out and um, yeah. So I ended up stopping to iron my fabric because this fabric is about 10 years old. I had it when I had my boutique a long time ago and uh, before CKC and it had some pretty big wrinkles in it. So I definitely recommend ironing your fabric before you sew because if you wait to try to do it after you're done sewing, um, it just, it never looks as good. So it's good to just take the five minutes and iron it before you begin cutting. That's my pro tip for you.
Okay, so now I just finished cutting out all of my pieces. Let me put my stuff out of the way real quick. Okay, so I have the two crisscross straps. I have two front bloomer pieces. I think it's called front romper pieces. I have two back romper pieces. I have four ruffles, side ruffles, four on the bloomers, and then I have the heart. And I also have my lace here that I'm gonna put around the heart, but I don't have that measurement. I'm not sure if there's a measurement in the pattern. It might just go all the way around and get pinned there and I'll cut to length. So now we're going to move over to the sewing machine and start with the instructions. Okay, so step one, if you're doing the um, side ruffles, you're going to place them right sides together like this. And then you are going to go to your sewing machine or serger and you're going to serge or sew all along the curve. And then you will flip it right side out and we'll come back here when we're done. So I just sewed here and I turned them right side out and I actually pressed them because I really like to iron <laughs> my pieces when I'm done with them. Um, and just keeps it looking nice and fresh. So um, now we're going to top stitch and to top stitch you just sew in one eighth of an inch from the seam. And then we're also going to gather um, here. And to gather you um, use a straight stitch and you move it to the longest length on your machine. And when we come back, I'll show you these pieces and we will move on to the next part of the pattern. So I just um, basted, or not basted, sorry, I just gathered them, and this is what they look like. I ended up not top stitching. It, you don't have to. Um, it's not in the instructions, but normally I would. However, I didn't have a thread that matched well enough, so I decided against it. And I'd already ironed, so it was all set. So now we're moving on to the next step. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your front bloomer piece, and you're going to measure down three and a quarter inches from the top on each side. And I'm going to mark that with a erasable pen right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side right there. And then you measure a half an, in a half an inch up from the bottom. So we're going to go right there. And the same thing on this side right here. And now you're going to gather your ruffle to fit in that area. You want it to start and stop right there in between those lines that we just made. And once we do that, um, I gotta gather this more, but we're going to pin it in place and then you're gonna take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to baste it in place. And I will show you what it looks like after I do that. Now that I have the ruffles basted on, and remember to baste, you're just using a gathering stitch. You just move your stitch to the longest length and you sew. So now that it's basted on, I'm going to place this other front piece on top, the lining, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up sewing down this leg opening and down this leg opening only. That's all you're sewing. And you're going to do the same thing on the uh, romper back piece. So let me put them right sides together and show you where to sew. You're gonna sew right here and right here. And then you're going to um, turn them right side out and iron. So after you sew here and here, turn them right side out and iron. And then we will come back here and take a look. Here are my pieces. I just sewed and opened and ironed right here. And the same thing right here. So now what we want to do is we want to sew them together to create the bloomers piece. So um, what you're going to do is open it up like this. I know the picture in the pattern looks a little different because this is just pushed in like this. And so you don't see it in the pattern. It's just like that. But since we just ironed it, 
I'm just going to keep it out because I don't want to, um, I don't know, get rid of the nice creases I just made. <laughs> okay, so you're going to do that with both of the pattern pieces, or not pattern pieces, both of the, well, maybe they are pattern pieces. I don't know what you want to call them. Both of these. So here you go. Now it looks like this. Now, if I was using a different, like let's say that I was using a white piece for the liner fabric. Um, I didn't, I just used uh, the same fabric for the inside and outside because it's so much faster. Um, but if I was, then I would make sure that the front piece, which would be, let's say these pieces, matched up and the white pieces, we'll say these pieces, matched up. But if you did use a different liner, make sure that those fabrics are matching up. And um, if you didn't, then it doesn't really matter. And since I didn't, I'm just going to continue. So what you're going to do is you're going to pin down this side and sew it. And then you're going to pull it over to this side and you're going to pin down this side and sew it. One thing that I will recommend is that you want these seams to match up. And the best way to do that is to have one seam going this way and one seam going this way so that you can just butt them up right next to each other. And when you sew, they don't move. And you'll see they match up perfectly. So I am going to go off camera and I'm going to pin these and sew them. And then when I come back, I will show you what we have. Remember, you're going to pin and sew this side and then pull it over and pin and sew this side. Now we just sewed them together. You sh it should look like this. And let's flip it like this. There we go. And so now you want it to look like this. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to baste all along the top here because we're going to be creating our casing. So um, if you want, you can use a basting stitch on your sewing machine. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and serge around the whole entire top. And you can do this, choose to do the same, or like I said, use your um, sewing machine. So once we do that, come meet me back here. Make sure you bring one of these because you're gonna need it for the next step. All right, so I just surged the top of my, all the way around my bloomers. And I did already iron this because it's gonna make it easier for me to show you. So just kind of ignore that right now. But so it should look like this. Now you turn them inside out and you can create your waistband now. So what you're gonna do is you're going to fold the top back a quarter of an inch approximately which if you use a serger, that's usually what the seam allowance is for that. So I usually just fold back the seam allowance and iron. If you are using a serger, you don't actually have to fold this top layer back because it's not going to, it's not gonna fray. However, I don't like the look of the exposed like that. I don't like that. So it's just one quick step. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to fold it back one and a half inches and iron all the way around. And when you do, it will look like this. So now what you're going to do is you are going to top stitch up from the bottom one eighth of an inch, starting on, um, this is the front, starting on one side, one seam right here, and going all the way around the back and ending right here at the other seam. Do not sew across the front. We need the front to be open right now. So only sew from this side to the other side. And then we will come back and we'll do the next step. Hi, uh, yeah, so this is done, but I realized I was, I missed recording these two steps because I was pressing record and when I walked away from the camera like a moron. So um, ignore that this is complete. Right now you're going to be adding the, um, the cute little ruffle and you're gonna be creating the waist elastic. So what you're gonna do is you're going to be sewing down um, three quarters of an inch, starting at this seam and going all the way around the back and finishing at this seam. And like I said, it's down 0.75 inches from the top and it's to create this cute little ruffle. So when you add your elastic, it gets all ruffled. And when you're done with that, we'll come back and we'll do the next step. Hi, it's me again. Yes, I messed up this step as well. 
So what you're gonna do, um, if you're adding the crossover uh, straps for the um, that get tied in the back, you're gonna need to make buttonholes. So what you're going to do, which this will be a lot easier if your romper isn't gathered, which it shouldn't be, um, so ignore how complicated it is for me, you're going to find the back uh, center by matching up the side seams of the front and just pulling. And the exact center is right here. So you will put a pin here and your buttonholes are going to go under the elastic. So um, like I said, the top part is the ruffle. The next part is the elastic and you're going to go under that. And then you're going to measure over a half an inch and you're going to put a pin there. And then you're going to measure over a half an inch over here and you're going to put a pin here. And then you're going to go and you're going to sew these buttonholes. And I will see you back here when you're done. I just sewed my buttonholes and funny enough, we should have been measuring from the outside. I totally didn't even think about it. So my buttons are technically backwards, but I don't think anyone is going to notice. I mean, and I think they're a little tiny bit crooked, but again, no one is going to notice. Do not try ripping buttonholes out just because, you know, they're not perfectly perfect. I mean, if they're, you know, a half an inch off, then yeah, you might want to pull that one out. But if, you know, slight differences, don't let your perfectionism um, mess up your fabric. Okay. So I have my elastic threaded on or pinned to a pin and we're going to thread it through our waistband. So you're going to go in through the front and you're going to go through this casing. Do not go through the ruffle. Remember, go through this casing right here and you're just going to begin. Over here, I have, I don't know, probably about a half an inch out. I'm going to slightly pull it just until I have about a quarter inch. And then you're going to stitch right here. And you're going to be sewing through the top fabric, the elastic, the seam, and the lining. Um, so when you're looking at it from the outside, you're not going to see anything. And I would actually recommend stitching on this side, just so that um, you don't go crazy with your stitching and have stitching over here because if you're judging it based on this side if they're not lined up perfectly then it could definitely be off on the front and you will see it so when you stitch stitch on the front and then you're going to bring it all the way through and you're going to do the same thing on this side you're going to stitch in the ditch and then you can close this front opening and that is um how you will finish the waistband of your wrapper and I will come back and show you what it looks like when I'm done stitching. Now that we have threaded the elastic and closed the front waistband, it should look like this. We're getting so close. Okay, so now we need to make the leg elastic. It's very simple. Your, um, or the leg casing, sorry, for the elastic. You're just going to measure in a half an inch and sew all the way around. And then do the same thing over here and that creates your casing. And then you can thread your elastic into the casing. And then when you have about a quarter inch sticking out, sew it. And then when you get to the back and you have a quarter inch hanging out, sew it. And um, you're gonna do that for both legs. And we will come back and see what it looks like. Now that you have added your leg elastic, created your casing and added your leg elastic, it should look like this. And you are almost done with your bloomers. Um, if you are not adding the um, snapping crotch, then you can just turn it right sides out, or I mean wrong, wrong sides out. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of late, I'm getting a little tired. And then you're just gonna pin along here and sew and if you want which i highly recommend once you have it sewn you can iron the seam towards the front of the um, romper and then top stitch um, i would highly recommend doing that i however am going to add the bias tape so i can make the snap crotch so i definitely just lost that piece i had oh here it is um so what i did was i 
um, I already ironed it. I ironed in each side a quarter of an inch and then I folded it like bias tape. So you fold it in half and then you open it up and you fold each of the long sides towards the middle. And then when you're done, it folds up in half like this. And it should fit onto these two spots perfectly. I have that one and this one that I've already done. And so I'm just going to pin these in place and then sew um, at the bottom. So it's essentially top stitching them on. And if they, for some reason, they don't fit perfectly, like if they're a little too wide or something, you can just go in and, um, you know, fold the end in a little bit more um, so that you get the perfect fit because, you know, sometimes when you add the elastic and you add the seam allowance and everything, it can be just, you know, a smidge off. So it's super easy fix. Just, um, you know, adjust the uh, end folds. And then once you have these sewn on, you can add your snaps, um, like your cam snaps, using those manufacturer instructions. I believe we have a video for that and I will link them below. Um, so that is the next step when we are done. Um, you can go and iron your straps. And to do that, you're gonna do it like bias tape again. And you're going to just fold the end in a half an inch and then fold it in half and iron and then fold each end in. And then there you go. So now you're just going to sew this an eighth of an inch from the end. And I will come back and show you guys what those look like and we will be working on our bodice and we're almost done. Okay, so my phone died. So um, what I did was I went to the sewing machine and I just put on my um, bodice trim I didn't actually measure it based on the pattern. I just uh, pinned it on and started sewing. So that way if I needed a little extra or um, I had a little more, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, I just, in the beginning, when I first started sewing, I messed up so many times with um, measurements of lace and stuff that I would like stretch too much or not enough. And it was always short, like an inch. So now I just prefer to do it this way. Okay, so. The next step is to apply your straps and you're going to do that by using this pattern piece um, to put on your strap. And the thing that you want to make sure of is that you put it on at this angle because if you do not put it on at this angle then your strap is going to be um, going sideways. So I have that one and then I'm going to come over here and where's the other strap? Right here. I'm going to pin this one on. And then the other thing that I like to do once I pin them on to make sure that they're um, equal is I fold it in half and I look and see where the straps are exactly. And these two are lined up perfectly. So now we're going to put it in here and we are going to pin all the way around here leaving um and then when you sew you're going to leave like a two or three inch opening over here so that you can turn it all right side out so i'm going to go and i'm going to pin all the way around here so it lays uh nice and flat and there's no moving when I go to start sewing it on my sewing machine. Uh, I can't use my serger on this because of the V, so I'm just going to use my sewing machine. And um, yeah, I will come back when I'm done sewing it and show you what I got. If you're new to sewing, make sure you use lots of pins for this step because this heart is a little difficult to sew for newbies. So I just finished sewing on my straps and sewing the um, front bodice pieces together. I do still have my uh, opening here but I wanted to check and make sure that the straps looked good which they do they look straight um, this one if you look it's a little bit crooked um, so I probably could have angled it a tad more but I, I think it's okay I don't, I don't think it matters that much I think um, yeah I think it's gonna be fine um, but if it's like over here then you did not um, angle it enough you want it to be as straight as it can be. Maybe it's not as crooked as I thought it was. But anyways, so now that everything looks good, I'm really happy with how everything looks. I'm going to turn it right uh, inside out again, and I'm going to clip the curves 
um, and then I'm going to flip it back this way and top stitch so I can close this hole. And then we will be attaching our bodice to the romper and we will be done. Okay, so I am done with my bodice and now I want to attach it to my cute little romper. Oh my God, it's gonna be so cute. Okay, so there's a chart on page three, I believe it is, that tells you um, what the finish length of the romper is going to be. And that is what you should use as um, your base for where to attach this top piece at. Um, the beauty of this is that if your child um, is in a different, like needs a little bit different length, that's fine. You can, you know, adjust for that. I think I made the 9 to 12. Yes, I did. And so I need to make mine uh, 13 and a half inches. So 36. Oh, look at that. It's almost perfect. 13 and a half. Yeah. So I will attach it here. Um, these are the only pins I have on me right now. Eesh. Oh, the other thing you want to do before you do that, you want to find the center. That could have been bad. Okay. And then obviously the center of your bodice is that. There. That looks better. There we go. So I'm going to take it over and I'm going to top stitch um, it in place going right over the top stitching that I already made. So once I do that, I just have to add my snaps, which um, I will do later and it will be done. I will come back to show you what the final product looks like. All right, I got my bodice sewn on, I got my snaps done and this puppy is finished. Thank you so long for following, or thank you so much for following along on this video. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and we will try to answer. You can also come join our group on Facebook. Facebook it's called CKC Patterns. Um, yeah, so hopefully we will see you guys there and we can't wait to see what you create. Thanks for following along.